So the story of us being here today in Tallinn really starts um, quite a few decades back when I first played um, choral music to Richard Harvey back in the early 2000s. He was writing music for films and I was uh, joining his studio and his team to help him out on that path. When Richard started working with orchestral tools, it was really the next step to take to make sure that we also managed to record the Stadium Philharmon Shame Choir here in Tallinn. Richard Harvey is a very good friend of us and from London and he uh, mentioned he recorded some choral works here in Estonia with the Estonian Philharmonic Chamber Choir and he was amazed about the tenors in particular. He mentioned they sound like uh, the most silky tenors that he have heard before so um, he mentioned we should definitely uh, try to connect and uh, to maybe do a sample library here in Tallinn. We try to deliver our collections um, in a kind of a sound world idea um, that start actually with Metropolis Arc 1 where we really try to, to come up with an entire orchestra, with a, with a full choir, with percussion, everything on board. And we thought about doing the same here in Tallinn to really conserve somehow this kind of sound. Mostly when the choir sings, they have the strings up front, which is quite natural. So for us, um, it felt like a must-have to also um, deliver the chamber strings together with the choir. There are a lot of reasons why this choir has to be recorded here in Tallinn. This is the territory, this is the, the home of the choir. They've recorded countless albums and, uh, and conducted many concerts in that very same church. We thought the church would be the right thing, the Nigoliste here in, in Tallinn, in the old town. It is, has a very long reverb tail and um, also um, I know that, that uh, Avo Pert himself, he also did a lot of recordings in this church, also with the same choir, the Estonian Philharmonic Chamber Choir. So both the, the orchestra and the choir, they have been traveling around the world. In fact, I've heard them perform in New York, in Paris, in Hamburg, you name it. When you have an ensemble, um, a certain element of tuning to each other is essential. In a huge choir, you might kind of be one of many, but in a chamber choir, you have actually very often the, the feeling that there are still a, a number of soloists when you have just one section. This is really the, the most difficult challenge to make sure that everybody is together. But this is something that they have already been working on for decades. So this is something that we can really hear today and it works. The culture is also um, influenced by the environment around it. And I think this makes um, especially the musicians here in Tallinn and the choir culture here in Tallinn um, very special. You have this wonderful nature here, the forests and the coasts at the Baltic Sea. This influences also the music and the culture overall. And um, you hear this not just in the music and the composition and the written music, you also hear this in the articulations and how the musicians play. There are a number of synonyms that could resonate with Estonia. For example, long winters and language and nature. And I think that many of these can be found to be connecting to music and its strong musical tradition, especially with, with singing. Estonia is most famous in, in modern history by gaining its independence uh, from the Soviet Union uh, by its singing revolution. Um, singing has been a very major part and very important part by everybody, by many people in the country, where 20,000 people sing um, on the song festival grounds to an audience of 100,000 plus the remaining population of the entire country with the media. I think it's about being together. So this is what brings people together. Choir, the first time the choir uh, was singing the first notes, we thought, oh my God, this is so different from what we uh, heard from the Teldex studio before. This is definitely something uh, I haven't seen in any library before. The sound is 
really atmospheric. It is more kind of quiet. Um, everything is slowed down and um, you really can hear this kind of icy sound in the strings and also the choir has, a, has much less vibrato. The Estonian Philharmonic Chamber Choir has a certain softness, a softness and a roundness in the voice um, at, at the lower registers and also at the lower um, dynamics. And this chamber choir profile has really shaped their, their colour and their singing style. So this is what really makes them special and in a way very suitable for film music. The strings that we have are really working on a level of having very little vibrato. Um, a little bit is essential for, it, for there to be depth between the frequencies, but at the same time when we have these different patches from flageolets or, or tremolos or whatever, then it's really about adding this subtle depth. We have a section of five violins and those five violins play very long sustains and they change their dynamic within those sustains. And we have one musician who plays the opposite. So uh, when the entire section plays quiet, then the single violin plays a little bit louder. So it's like two waves uh, going against each other. This collection is really made for um, TV and underscoring to um, let chords um, that you play shine in a very nice way because it always changes. It is the perfect tool for, for underscoring actually. When we arrived at the church, we thought, why not do the organ as well? It's, it's an amazing organ with a lot of uh, different colors and registers that we, that we were able to use. And as I mentioned before, this church was pretty much used for many, many recordings, classical recordings. And uh, therefore, the, those instruments is, are in a perfect condition. I think you, you really should see this project like having all the different instruments together in a very compatible way. Everything fits together, the choir with the strings and the organ. Music can often be regarded as something old because it has always been. And then comes over time um, a development. So I think this really works here the same way, where we have some old singing tradition and we use the modern possibilities that we have to capture these. When you play the first patch, it is just instant inspiration and I think this will also lead to, to new works. I'm, I'm really curious to hear about what people will come up with new uh, compositions out there.